Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a quick demo of an RFID system integrated into a Redline HMI. So what we have here is a power supply connected to a 7 inch CR3000 Redline HMI. I'm connected to my Ethernet 1 port and um, connected straight to a Turk TBEN RFID block. Now this is one of their smaller blocks. Um, you've got two channels here for RFID, the first two channels, and the other two channels are for, for discrete IO configurable. And so I'm connect I have a power supply connected here via a Pico connection and then a Pico Ethernet connection here. So one is for my HMI and one connection is for my laptop. So the nice thing about this one is that it actually serves as a switch. So I can actually download to my HMI through my switch. So that's kind of cool. And then I have my channel zero for my RFID connected to my transceiver um, Turk. This is one of our bulkier ones. Um, when it's also very common, it's got a rotatable here um, connection, so it's kind of nice. Uh, I also like the visual indication that we have a tag present, right? So I also show this on my HMI program. So if I don't have a connection, a little light turns on. So that's pretty cool. These are also uh, some of our tags that we make. We obviously make some smaller ones, but because this is kind of bigger and the transceiver is a little bit bigger, you actually get quite, quite some distance here. That looks like about five, four inches. So that's kind of cool. Um, we make some smaller ones as well. So I'll go ahead and show you now uh, how exactly this works. Um, so whenever you do an RFID command, you have to tell it the length of bytes that you want to read or write. So in this case, I normally just leave it to eight. That's usually more than enough. Um, um, and so you'll notice here that I'm actually reading something. So that would be my unique code. The, I, I believe it's uh, either the EPC or internal. It's the default code that's already written to every single tag. Um, and so that's going to be the default read whenever the tag is present, which, um, which it is. So for example, if I, if I actually wanted to read what was in that, what was written into that tag, I can do a read here and you'll notice I'm reading, um, a decimal value of five. Uh, so now if I want to write something different to it, I actually have to do an idle command in between that. So you'll notice I went back to idle, um, and if I want to change this, maybe I want to do like nine, and I'll go ahead and send that with the right command. Um, you'll notice this goes to zero, and I'm on a write. My response code is telling me that it's under writing. So I got to go back to idle. Notice it goes back to the default, and I actually have to read. So um, it did take the nine. Um, so that's kind of how it works. This is uh, a very simplified, very simple demo, um, but it, it's a good starting point for you to write your code. This function here, having to go back to idle, uh, is something that most people would just build, uh, will automate in their program, in their PLC program. So whenever the response code uh, goes to two, for example, which is the command code for read, you would set um, some sort of code in your PLC to reset it back to idle. So that's how uh, you would get around that. So I mentioned earlier that I'm connected through an ethernet cable to my laptop on that switch. Um, so what I'm doing is showing you now the Turk service tool, and I've done this in previous videos, but this is just a really neat feature of our block IO where you can see the IP address. It'll search, you can do a search and it'll look, it'll look for anything that's connected to it. Um, and so that's a good way to find the IP address and um, 
We have a wink feature where if you have a bunch of these connected, you can select the one that you want and wink and a little light will turn on on your block. So that's kind of cool. You can do, you know, factory resets and all of that here. Um, you can also, which I really appreciate, is load an RNG program through the Turk service tool. So that's that's kind of neat. So it just seems like every upgrade on the Turk service tool um, keeps getting better here. So anyway, I thought I'd show you that. Um, and then as I continue on with this demo, I want to show you some of the features here that are kind of neat. So because I have um, an IP address on there, I actually get a built-in web server with my block IO, which means I get access to parameters, information, um, I get a memory map of how to map um, over, you know, either, either Ethernet IP or Modbus TCP registers. Um, that useful to building your project. You also get um, parameters here that you can change on your RFID block that pertain to that. Um, so this is um, this is very neat that I can just do this through the web server. I don't have to connect to Pactware or any other software. Something really neat here is I can do different operation modes on that one block. So our block can actually do both HF and UHF transceivers. So that's really neat. I also have a feature called bus mode so I can actually daisy chain a bunch of my HF transceivers together and that's that can be um, for specific static applications can be very useful. So um, that's, that's really neat. I can also do read commands and write commands through my web server. So I'm, I'm actually connected to a Modbus master right now being my HMI. So I, I can't do it through here right now. But um, you see how my read data will come into my bytes here. That's what we wrote earlier in the program. I can also write through here. Normally, if I weren't connected to a master here, I, I could enter a decimal value here to whatever byte I wanted and then through my control status, um, do a um, um, do a command here to write instead of read. So that's one of the features of our blocks. Now I'll go ahead and show you how um, this database is built. So on the HMI, once you set up your your IP address on here, um, you can add the protocol that you want. For this, or you, the easiest thing to use is uh, Modbus TCP. And once I build that, once I add that, I just give it the IP address of the block itself. I don't have to change anything else here. And that's it. I start creating my tags. You'll notice my response code is 40,001, which is where all my holding registers are. So if I go back to my Modbus TCP memory map here for reference, I can see that my response code register is actually zero. So I've talked about this before. You always have to add an offset of one to your register for it to communicate properly between Crimson and Turk. So some people start at zero, others start at one. This is a case where you have to do the offset. So um, you'll also notice it tells you how long that that byte is or, or that information is within that byte. So in this case it's 16. So I can use an entire register for that. But for example, I want to read just when the tag is present. Well, that's on register two and it's only taking up one bit. So that's actually register three. So if I, so that would be a flag tag, like a Boolean, just telling you if it's on or off, um, you'll notice that's correctly mapped 
and I treat that as a bit array and the bit position it tells us it's it's one or I'm sorry is zero so it's the first one which is bit zero and we're just reading that so it's read only um, and then one other thing here so if I want to read that first byte um, there's a really good video that Joe Waskis did on doing bit masking and so what I'm doing here is because my first byte is a length of 8 and a reg a, one register is 16 bits so pretty much I just want to see the first 8 and so I have to apply some bit masking to my register to only read that value so it comes back in as a decimal value okay and now if you want to write a command my command code is found in register 2049 for red lion and 2048 you'll see it here so and that's a whole register so I'll leave that as as is um, but it is a right register so you'll notice the different colors here um, I do always have to set a length so that's going to be something that I write to as well and so if I want to write to my byte 0 um, I just left this as writing to both byte 0 and 1 so anyway this is a very simple demo once I've created my tags um, I've created my page and the only code that I have in here is this data entry for the for the tags that we created the the length and the right the byte 0 so it's just my length here and my right output data byte. Now the code to execute these, that all that I've done here is, is found in these buttons. So if I do a read command, you'll notice I have some complex code here and all it's doing is setting that command code to 2, a value of 2. I did the same thing for all of these. So my write command is set to 4 and my idle command is set to 0 so it knows that upon releasing that button it's going to execute that command code so you have to type in here the length and the output data that you want before executing the command otherwise it's, it's not going to give you anything back anyway so this is pretty much it that's all i have to show you for this demo it's very simple but it does show you how to set the communication up for RFID. If you have any questions, leave a comment. Hope you enjoyed this video and hope you have an awesome day. Thanks for watching.